right, hardened fasteners, as in ARP studs. Should you use them, and what do you need to know if you do use them? So let's start with the basics as uh, figure out what we're talking about. You have bearings, your main bearings and your rod bearings. Um, they are hydrodynamic bearings. That means that there's a film of oil flown around the bearing and literally floats the crankshaft in the center of the bearing. Now for this to work, the gap between the bearing surface and the crank has to be held at a very, very precise value. There's not a lot of room for slop. Um, so we need to put these bearings into the journal and maintain a perfect circle inside of the journal. The journal is made up of the, the bottom half of the block and then what they call a cap. And you drop it into the, the block and you tighten the bolts down. So logically then, if my bolts are bigger and or tougher, aka they can't stretch, I'm going to have more resistance to this cap wanting to lift off of the block and allow those bearing clearances to grow. If the cap does stretch those bolts and lift off of the block, uh, a couple of things can happen. Uh, the most common one is a spun bearing, aka the bearing will literally the crank will grab one of the ends of the bearing and clock it inside of that journal. Now the problem with that is that there's a single hole in the bottom of your bearing to allow oil into that bearing and if it's not lined up in the block anymore that bearing no longer gets oil bad things happen. The second thing that can happen is, is that the bearings will separate and lift a little bit and you will temporarily lose oil pressure in that bearing and score it all up then even if it relaxes and comes back, that clearance is no longer correct and that journal will slowly eat itself. So, if you're running a motor with more power or more RPM or anything that's going to have more force trying to get this main cap to lift off of its seat, you're going to want to hold it down a bit better. The easiest thing to do is simply replace the fasteners. The bolts that come in your engine from the factory are cost effective and um, easy to install in, in, in an assembly line. They're not weak but there's harder metals out there and if you apply enough force um, from the piston to the crankshaft you can, you can get these bolts to stretch. If you get an ARP or equivalent hardened fastener in there it's a much tougher metal and that's all it is. It's just a a more, uh, more dense metal that resists stretching. It's got a much higher tensile strength than the factory bolt. Now, when you do that, you change uh, more properties than just the bolt. Because the bolt is harder and doesn't stretch as much when you torque it down, you have to torque it to a much higher number. And the idea is that you're putting more clamping force on that bearing to keep it in place. When you put more clamping force on it, believe it or not, you can actually compress this main cap a little bit. And here's a picture to showing an exaggerated view of what happens, but basically this circle is no longer round, it becomes football shaped due to the fact that you're actually compressing this metal a little bit. Now, when someone says that you know, you get an, an oblong hole from them, you, you, you picture a, a massive change in the shape, but it's really moving by like half a thousandths to a thousandths, it's hardly anything. But it's enough to throw the clearances on your bearing way out of spec. So when you put hardened fasteners in there, you need to have the machine shop re-drill that hole through the center to make it perfectly round again. So what you do is you buy your fasteners and you can install them or you can have the shop install them. And when you drop your motor off to get machined, give the machinist the um, spec sheet that comes with the fasteners and he will torque them down to the required specification and then line more them. Um, make sure you give him that carter right on the block what number you want him torqued to. Uh, he does have to remove them a couple of times if he's decking the head or doing other machining operations. He's got to take the caps off. Um, I always deliver mine installed and, and torqued down and then give him the spec that I want him to use if he has to remove them during those processes. If you are reusing your factory studs, you do not have to line bore the block. It's already square um, from the factory. And if you retorque it to the factory spec, you can retorque it as many times as you want. It's always going to be a perfectly round hole when you do it. 
It's just if you change the clamping force, and you know, obviously we want a higher clamping force if we're doing a performance build to ensure that that main cap stays seated on there. If we do a higher clamping force, we have to line bore the block again. Uh, just to make sure that all five of our main bearings are in line with each other and all perfectly round holes. Um, and we'll double check that when we go to install the crank. We'll check all of the bearing clearances and make sure that they're all exactly where we want them. The same is true for rods. Now there's a couple of exceptions with rods. Um, most of the time with the Miatas you don't have to worry about it because we don't reuse the factory rods very often. And Aftermarket rods often come with hardened fasteners already installed and they're already machined um, correctly for that fastener, so it's not an issue. With some engines, they have what's called a split rod, which means that instead of a cap that was machined and then you know had a perfect hole cut into it, they actually cast the rod, drill a perfect hole, and then break the cap off of it. Now the benefit of this is that the fibers in the metal are all aligned and you can, they can withstand a lot more clamping force and not change the shape. You'll hear a lot of LS guys say that they put ARP studs in theirs and measured all of them and they didn't need any machining. Something you always want to check but you, know, you can get away with that. The Miata does not have split rod caps. Um, I've never heard of anyone using the factory rods and putting hardened studs in them because uh, the rod goes before the bearing most times, but if you were to um, do a hardens fastener in your rod, you'd also have to get the rod remachined. A torque rating is simply a measurement of the resistance to turning. If you were to put a burr or bend one of the threads before you stuck it in, you'd still reach your, say, 60 foot-pounds of torque, but it wouldn't have the same clamping force that it was designed to. So. Uh, stud manufacturers often supply a lubricant that they want you to put on the threads and the purpose of this is that you get the same amount of resistance that they had when they were designing the part so that you make sure that your clamping force is exactly what they had. So read the instructions, sometimes they say to install dry, sometimes they say to use oil on it, ARP usually comes with a packet of grease that they want you to use for installation. So it's very important that you, if you want an accurate clamping force, that you install the part the way it was designed to be installed. So thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time.